Hi, this is Pastor Steve of North Hollywood First United Methodist Church, and I welcome you to our online virtual Christmas Eve service. And I hope that as you watch this, you are warm and comfortable in your home. Hopefully that you are gathered with loved ones, or you are in a welcome time of being alone, present with the trappings and the decorations that come with Christmas, but also longing in your heart for the true meaning and the deeper magic of Christmas. We also hope that you will find something in this program that will touch your heart, that will make your season meaningful, and also will make you a part of our community. For when we say all means all, we truly mean that you are welcome in our midst and that God's grace is available for all people, no matter where they've come from, no matter their culture, no matter how they see themselves, no matter who they love. We are a community of God's grace. And as we welcome and remember God's grace in our world in the form of a little child, I invite you to join in our opening hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, hymn number 240. Let us pray. O wondrous God of the stars, we come tonight with breathless wonder to see the babe who will change our lives. We hear the names Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, and we are in awe. You have touched the earth this night with your unconditional love. Touch our hearts, Lord, and our minds and our souls. May we never tire of this story. May we never take it for granted, Lord. 
make this night magical again. Amen. And if you'll now please join me in the call to worship. A light shining in the darkness. What could it be? The sound of angels' wings. What could it mean? A baby born in a stable? Who could it be? Come to Bethlehem and see. This night, this night is a night to remember, a night when we discover that we are not forgotten or alone or abandoned. This night is the night when Jesus arrives and winter ends. We gather in the night to receive the light, shrug off despair, and embrace hope again. We gather to sing and celebrate because Christmas is here and the curse is broken. We light these candles to push away a never-ending winter, to shine light and celebrate new life. We light these candles to declare that unto us a Savior is born, who is Christ the Lord. Because Jesus is born, the curse is broken, and Christmas is here. Hey kids, it's Christmas week. Are you so excited? What are you looking forward to most? Probably the presents, decorations, family, delicious treats and food. There is so much to be excited about and I don't blame you one bit. But my question is, do you know why you celebrate the way you do this holiday? Do you know the real reason for this season? It's Jesus, it's his birthday. And that is why we do so many fun and cool things at Christmas. It is because of him, but it's so easy to get distracted. I mean, we love to go shopping and wrap presents and we get so busy and we think about Santa and the reindeer more than we think about the true reason we celebrate Christmas. And that is Jesus himself. So I have some tips and tricks that you can use to remind yourself of why we celebrate. It's all around you, everywhere you go and in your house, but this will remind you the real reason we celebrate. The first thing is stars. Stars are used in decoration everywhere you go. They're used to top off Christmas trees, but why? because of the star of Bethlehem. That's the star that appeared and led the wise men to the baby Jesus, right? Also, have you noticed all the Christmas lights and all the candles? What does that mean? Well, we're reminding everyone that Jesus is the light of the world. Candy canes, not just yummy candy, this is a representation of the shepherds who were the very first to hear the news that a baby would be born and become the king for all the world. Now, I like to turn my candy canes upside down because it makes a J for Jesus. Christmas is all about Jesus. Now, trees, poinsettias, holly, wreaths, people are very, very connected to all of the green because it represents everlasting and that's Jesus. This is something that will grow a poinsettia plant, holly, it will grow in the dead of winter and in snowy places it brings us bright and vibrant beautiful color and it brings hope and that is Jesus. Also how about bells? They symbolize the sound of everyone knowing that baby Jesus was born. It's this little, hello, Jesus is here. That's what bells are all about. Now, Christmas is the season of giving and we love giving and receiving gifts. We talk about this a lot, but do you know why we give gifts to each other? And it's because the wise men who traveled far to get to the manger 
where baby Jesus lay and they knelt down bringing him very expensive treasures of frankincense, gold, and myrrh. And because they did this for baby Jesus, we take on these traditions and give each other gifts. But really, we're not giving gifts because we're special. It's because of him, baby Jesus. So when you think about it, my goodness, I mean, if it wasn't for baby Jesus, we would not be enjoying the Christmas season like this at all. It just wouldn't exist. So when you're looking around, seeing all of the traditional things, think about Jesus. Say happy birthday to him and have a wonderful and grateful Christmas.
Good morning. Our scripture for today is from Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were also shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. During the last few weeks, we've been using C.S. Lewis's The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe as a way of seeing the season of Advent in a new way. We were introduced to the land of Narnia as, as a place where it was always winter and never Christmas. A queen had claimed her place on the throne of Narnia and cast the magic spell that kept her in power and made the perpetual winter an inescapable reality and kept all the joy of winter and the promise of spring an almost forgotten reality. But there were prophecies that promised that the sons of Adam and the daughters of Eve would appear in Narnia. And when that happened, the queen's reign would end. Winter would cease. And Aslan, the creator and true king of Narnia, would return. And there were many of the inhabitants of Narnia who had faith that one day these prophecies and promises would come true and that Narnia would be released from its captivity and the darkness of a never-ending winter. So when Lucy, Peter, Susan, and Edmund appear in Narnia, the queen's power begins to end, and signs of winter's end begin to emerge within Narnia. And as the white witch tries to thwart the movement of Aslan and as she tries to thwart the progression of the prophecies, she desperately tries to capture the children. Tipped off by Edmund, who was previously bribed with magical Turkish delight, she and her secret police set out to capture the rest of the children and put an end to this threat to her reign. Now, realizing what Edmund had done and the threat to all their lives, Lucy, Susan, Peter, 
and their new friends, the beavers, set out on a very dangerous journey to a place that was called the Stone Table in order to meet up with Aslan and the inhabitants of Narnia who had sided with him. And during this hurried, tense journey, Mr. Beaver leads them into a special hiding place, a cave known only to beavers, so that they can rest and that they can get some sleep. Lucy, Peter, Susan, and, and, they, and the beavers, they all fall asleep very, very quickly. And they all awake suddenly to the light that is filtering through the cave's opening and to the sound of jingling bells. Could it be the witch in her sleigh? Has the witch found them? And it gets really quiet for a moment. And Mr. Beaver decides to go and sneak outside of the cave and to see what's outside. And discovers that the sleigh is not carrying the witch. Instead, she is much surprised to see that it is Father Christmas. He calls to the children and Mrs. Beaver saying, Come on, come and see. This is a nasty knock for the witch. It looks as if her power is already crumbling. Peter asks, What do you mean, Mr. Beaver? Didn't I tell you that she made it always winter and never Christmas? Didn't I tell you? Well, just come and see. And there they see him, Father Christmas in a sleigh driven by reindeer and dressed in his bright red robe with a white beard, there was no mistaking him. I've come at last, he announced. She has kept me out a long time, but I've got it in at last. Aslan is on the move, and the witch's power is weakening. The winter which had inflicted Narnia as long as anyone could remember was the result of a magic spell cast by the White Witch, that self-appointed Queen of Narnia. And it's strong magic, one that has lasted through the ages, but now it is starting to fade. What is the cause of this thaw? What has weakened the grip of this strong winter spell? A deeper magic is at work. One that is deeper than the witch can conjure on her own will. This deep magic is woven into the natural laws of Narnia. It has been present since its creation, and it runs as deep as the mountains themselves. And it belongs to the one who sung the world into its being. Aslan, the lion. In the same way, we have been reading in the Bible about promises God has made to God's people, about a time when God would come and when God would reign and when life here would be ordered in the way it was originally intended to be, the way life is ordered in heaven. The curse that has kept this world from being what God intended it to be would be one day broken And God would initiate a kingdom filled with God's peace, justice, equity, and love. This kingdom would arrive in the form of a human, a child, born in Bethlehem. A child we celebrate tonight and for the next 12 days. The Christmas story strikes us because the birth of this special child doesn't happen in the palace of a king. It happens in a place where animals are kept. And the baby isn't laid to rest in a crib. It's placed in a feed trough. And the child isn't dressed in a royal gown. Instead, it is wrapped in swaddling cloths. And the birth announcement doesn't go out to the wealthy or the important or to other royalty. It goes out to the poor and forgotten and the outcast. They are the ones who are treated to the flashes of heavenly glory in the songs of angels. They are the ones invited to come and to see the newborn king. 
in our rush to sentimentalize the nativity. Do we forget that this is the story of the Christ, that the story of the Christ child is set in the middle of political intrigue? The Roman governor, probably at the order of the emperor, is taking a census in Palestine, the whole region of which is subject to the Roman Empire. And the king of Israel, Herod Archelaus, was appointed, by, was appointed to be king by Caesar Augustus and wasn't considered a true king of Israel by the Jewish inhabitants of Israel. But the appearance of this small child in Bethlehem would be the beginning of the end for all the authorities and the powers at this time. Change was coming for the world. The true light was entering the world. And darkness has not overcome it. A new kingdom, a new reign was inaugurated at Jesus' birth. The deeper magic, emerging from the creator of the universe, was beginning to work and put an end to the old curse. But if we are honest with ourselves, while inaugurated, we know that this kingdom of God just hasn't been brought to fulfillment or completion. It remains a work in progress. It needs citizens. It needs recruiters. It needs people to share the good news that God is on the move. It needs lives and hearts which will not only believe, but will work towards its completion. The shepherds leave the manger and share what they saw and experienced to everyone they met. People need to know and to see that God is on the move and that the curse has been broken. Which brings me to you and to me. This Christmas, when we receive the infant Jesus, we are also given a mission to carry out. A mission to spread the good news, to lift up the oppressed, to remember the forgotten, to invite the outcast in to heal the broken, to care for the sick, to feed the hungry, and to clothe the naked. If we want to keep the Christ in Christmas, we will do these things as a part of the light this child brought into our world. The scene with Father Christmas in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe ends with Father Christmas handing the beavers and the children a tray containing five cups and saucers, a bowl of sugar, a jug of cream, and a huge piping hot kettle of tea. And he cries out, A Merry Christmas! Long live the true king! And he cracks his whip and then is out of sight before anyone realizes it. On Christmas Day, most of us will eat a large celebratory meal with our families in honor of the Christ child and in honor of the, if I may put it this way, the deeper magic, the deeper magic that is work bringing this long winter to an end. And whether it's the emerging forth from the pandemic or a continued struggle against inequity and equality and injustice, I hope that we can not only offer prayers of gratitude for the gift of Jesus, but also offer a hearty Merry Christmas. Long live the true King. Merry Christmas. Amen.
we've come to a time when we will join together in prayer. And I invite you to close your eyes and to join with me. God of joy, we come to celebrate again the arrival of love incarnate here in our very midst. Your glorious arrival is enough to cause the forest to sing for joy, yet we still find reasons to complain and sigh. Your light of salvation is bright enough to illuminate every corner of our lives, yet we still find ourselves shrouded in worry and doubt. Your gift of love is big enough for the whole world, yet we still find ourselves resentful that your love extends to those whom we deem to be unworthy. We find ourselves anxious because your love is offered to those we wish to exclude. We confess that all too often we prefer the laws and the current order of our world to the order and ways of your kingdom. And we ask that in the light of the stable where the overlooked and forgotten have gathered to celebrate the miracle of your love, that you would give us the strength and courage to join you at the manger. Give us the eyes and the heart to see the deeper magic of your kingdom moving through our world. Help us be messengers who carry news of your movement throughout this place, both with words and actions worthy of the child born so long ago. Lord, we pray for those digging out of disaster this season. May the kindness and generosity of neighbors and strangers remind them that they are not alone or abandoned. We pray for those who are sick or are recovering from injuries. May your healing spirit be at work in their bodies and may they receive good care and proper courses of treatment from their doctors. And for those struggling to receive care, we pray that you would open up access to health care for them. We pray that you would bind up the hearts of the brokenhearted and bring light into the pain and darkness they find themselves in. Help us to bear your light to them. This Christmas, Lord, we ask that you would give us gifts that serve your kingdom and move your reign in this world. That we might be servants of your justice and bearers of your peace, love, joy, and hope to undo the curse which separates us from you. We ask this in the spirit of the prayer Jesus brought into our world. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Silent night, holy night, all is calm.
We've come to the end of our time together tonight. And I do hope that this isn't the only part of Christmas that's going to make up your celebration this year. I do hope that you will be gathering with loved ones, that you will be sharing presents, that you will be celebrating with a feast. Celebrating that little infant Christ that was born so long ago. But I also hope that you will be aware that the work that was begun in that baby boy has not yet been brought to completion. And I hope that you will see how God is on the move and that you'll join in with the deeper magic and break the curse which separates us from God. Let's bring this winter to an end and let's be the people of Christ. Merry Christmas. Long live the true king. Amen.